from Warrington. But where is Warrington? 200 miles or so northwest of London, on the borders of Lancashire and Cheshire, is the heart of one of Britain's most complex communications networks. The main railway line from London to Glasgow. The M6 motorway from south to north. The M62 motorway from east to west famous ship canal, linking Manchester with the sea at Liverpool. Sitting almost astride these great commercial lifelines is Warrington, a town with roots deep in history and a long tradition of thriving and diverse industry. Here, near the centre of the town, is the largest independent brewery in the United Kingdom, Greenall Whitley, founded 200 years ago and located on this site for nearly all of them. And just across the road, an autonomous part of the same commercial complex, are the headquarters of Gilbert and John Greenall, distillers and wine merchants throughout the same two centuries. That was how and when it all started, but not, of course, on this site. It was in 1761 that a man called Thomas Dakin wanted to make what he described as a better and smoother gin than could be bought in London at that time. So he came north and set up a still in Warrington, in these premises in the main street. A hundred years later, the flourishing business he founded came into the hands of two brothers, Gilbert and John Greenall. They changed the name of the firm, but not Dakin's recipe for making gin, which remains in use to this day. By the 1960s, the firm had long outgrown the small Bridge Street premises, and the whole operation was moved to the spacious site near the Greenall Whitley Brewery. But even here, the link with Thomas Dakin was carefully preserved. In this very up-to-date building, one of the stills is made up from parts of two that used to stand in the old premises back in 1831. Only three men in 80 years have known the recipe for making Greenall's gin. Ian Hamilton served a 20-year apprenticeship before he took over as head distiller. The actual ingredients are well known, and they come from all over the world. Coriander seed from Morocco. Lemon peel from Spain. Oris powder from Italy. Almond powder from the Middle East. Angelica from Saxony. Juniper berries from Italy. What matters, of course, is the exact quantity of each. And this is a closely guarded secret. Greenall's production process is unique because it involves passing vapour through the ingredients. The still contains a mixture of triple distilled spirit and water in about equal quantities. Steam circulating through pipes inside the bowl turns the mixture into vapour. which passes up the column where the temperature is controlled. Along the pipe, across the building, up through the ingredient box, down through the condenser, which turns it back into liquid, which comes out here as gin.
At the start of the day, and again at the end, the liquid contains traces of impurities and byproducts called faints. These are drawn off and disposed of separately. Only the best quality liquid, known as the middle cut, is sold as gin. At this stage, it's about 153 degrees proof, and demineralized water is added before it's bottled. Vodka is made by the same process in the same stills, but with different ingredients. The rapidly growing sales of Greenall's wines, both at home and abroad, are one reason why the bottling plant at Warrington is kept so busy. Another reason is Bombay Gin, which is made in the same way as 1761, but with a different spirit base. Very popular overseas, especially in the American market, where its special character and dryness are greatly appreciated. A third reason is Vladivar, the brand name of the firm's immensely popular vodka. Today, Vladivar is number two in the ratings for all brands of vodka, as the result largely of a brilliantly conceived advertising campaign, which spread the name of Vladivar and Warrington everywhere, even into Russia, where some of the humor, apparently, was not greatly appreciated. <laughs> Details of the visit of the Russian State Ballet, sir. Covent Garden, the Manchester Opera House, and the Empire Bingo Hall, Warrington. Warrington? Where's Warrington? And once in Warrington, there will be a free performance of Swan Lake in the works canteen of the Vladivar vodka plant. At which time, Agent 27, you will locate the formula for Vladivar Vodka. The greatest vodka in the world. Comrade Olga! Pot de bras! One, two... Down! Down! Oh, Arabesque! Vladivar Vodka from Warrington, the greatest vodka in the world. Selling methods like these set the whole of Britain laughing and sent the sales of Vladivar rocketing. Would you like a drink? Yes, we do have vodka. Uh, Vladivar. Yes? Yes, please. That'll be all right, right. British Airways Flight BE. Oh, I to keep up with the ever-increasing output of all their products, the firm has recently installed automatic palletizers. When Greenalls moved from their old, rather cramped premises, they were determined not to be short of space. These huge warehouses were the result. With stocks maintained on this scale, backed by a prompt delivery service and Warrington's first-class communication system, Greenalls can be confident of keeping up with the demands of their expanding market, which includes, of course, the 1,600 or so pubs and getting on for 50 hotels owned by the group itself. At this board meeting, 
The main business was finalizing plans for a thoroughgoing up-marketing of the company's promotion material, including the design of the labels on the gin and vodka bottles. better than the old, uh, more distinctive, uh, more polish and more everything with it. We're moving now into the top bracket of vodka sales an eye-catching symbol of the company's forward-looking policy. But though the package may have a new look, the content of the bottle remains what it always was, a product of the highest quality, made by a firm with 200 years' experience behind it. And the capacity and the determination to see that more and more people the world over have the chance to get to know the spirit of Warrington.